What are trees in graph theory? That's what we'll be going over in today's Wrath of Math lesson. I previously did a lesson on this topic, but I watched it the other day. I didn't think it was very good, so that's getting deleted, and uh, this is a revolution. This is the new tree lesson uh, for graph theory. Now, we'll start, if you'll humor me, we'll start by thinking about how we would actually draw a real tree, like the plant. And that's going to give us some intuitive insight into what a graph theory tree should look like. So if you were if you were going to go ahead and draw a tree, and I can't draw very well, so I wouldn't do this, but if you were going to, you know, you might start at the, the trunk of the tree, draw where, you know, it's going into the ground, it's got its roots going in there, you got the ground like that, you got your tree, you got your trunk, you know, and then it'd go up some, I don't know what this is called, body of the tree or something, and you might add some branches, right? You might add some branches to your tree, and at the end of those branches, you might have some leaves. Oh yeah, you might have some leaves at the end of those branches. Branch over here, got some leaves. Some, some leaves at the ends of the branches. And then at the top, you got, you know, some more leaves, whatever. Um, something you certainly wouldn't do is draw a branch like this that cycles back into the tree. You also, you know, you wouldn't draw the tree like that. You wouldn't disconnect the tree. And uh, that's pretty much it. That's what a graph theory tree is. A tree in graph theory is a connected graph with no cycles. So that's our definition. A tree is a connected graph with no cycles. There are some other equivalent definitions that are pretty cool. We'll talk about them a little bit in this lesson. We'll prove them in a different lesson. But so let's go ahead and see an example of a tree. Again, it's a connected graph with no cycles. So here's an example of just such a graph. This graph is connected and we see that it has no cycles. So it's called acyclic. It's got no cycles. So it would not be a tree if we were to say add an edge right there. Then we've got a cycle. So that is no longer a tree because it contains a cycle. Now you might notice this tree has how many vertices? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight vertices. So the order of this tree, order is the number of vertices, is eight. Now what about the size of the tree? Well, that's pretty interesting. <clears throat> this is an equivalent definition of a tree, is that it's a connected graph where the size is one less than the order. So the size of this graph should be seven. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Look at that, seven. That's eight minus one, if I've ever seen eight minus one. Size is seven, one less than the number of vertices. A tree, the number of edges in a tree is one less than the number of vertices. Pretty cool. And again, that's not just a property of trees, that's an equivalent definition. A connected graph with one less edge than it has vertices. That's a tree. Now, suppose, we delete an edge from this graph. Let's say we delete this edge here. Notice that we have disconnected the graph. So that edge is what we would call a bridge. If when you delete an edge from a graph, you get one more component than you started with, so here we've got two components, whereas we started with one, then that edge is called a bridge, right? Because it's a bridge between these sort of two different pieces of the graph. So you delete the edge, and you're left with two components. Another equivalent definition of a tree is that it's a graph where deleting any edge disconnects the graph. So every edge in a tree is a bridge. That's another equivalent definition. Now notice here what we're left with after we delete that bridge. What do we have? We've got a, uh, a tree right here. This is a tree, and this is a tree. Both components are trees, because both components are connected graphs with no cycles. So what do you think you call that? This graph, it's not a tree, because it's disconnected, but its components are trees. So if we got, if the components of our graph are all trees, what do you think we call that? Well, it's graph theory, so of course we call it a forest. Very intuitive, pretty easy to remember. A forest is a graph whose components are all trees. So if a graph, you know, suppose we add that edge back in there, that is still considered a forest. So 
you know, in the world of graph theory, it takes considerably fewer trees to make up a forest than it does if you're just out and about. You wouldn't see a tree and say, you know, you're in, you're in the forest because there's one tree. But that's how it works in graph theory. Another kind of trivial example of a tree, trivial graph on one vertex, we see its order is one, it's connected, its size is zero, so it checks out, follows everything you would expect a tree to follow. Another uh, interesting definition of trees, another equivalent definition, is that every two vertices in a tree are connected by exactly one unique path. So that's another equivalent definition of a tree. For example, in our tree here, I don't think this green is very good, but oh well. If we look at this vertex and say this vertex, there's only one path connecting those vertices. That's it. There's no other, there's no other path connecting those two vertices. Another example would be if we look at this vertex and this vertex right here. There's only one path connecting those. So in a graph, if every pair of vertices is connected by exactly one unique path, then that graph is a tree. You can see if we were to add a cycle into this graph, so it's no longer a tree, then it would not fit that equivalent definition that we just stated. You can see now there's two paths to get from this vertex to this vertex. We could just go like that or we could go like that. So no longer fits any definition of a tree because it's not a tree. So that's just how that works. Again, the what I think is usually presented as the primary definition of a tree before talking about equivalent definitions, that it's a connected graph with no cycles. Notice as well, we have in this graph some vertices of degree one. These are sometimes called end vertices, but if we're talking about trees, we like to call them leaves. Or do we call them leaves? I, I'm not sure if we use the, the normal plural form of leaf in graph theory as well. I've never really uh, thought about that much, but if there's just one of them, we call it a leaf. A leaf in a tree is a vertex with degree one, which means there's only one edge that is incident to it. Now I'm not going to go through this proof in this lesson, but just as a, an example that you might find kind of helpful, um, if we say we wanted to prove that every path graph is a forest, I think you would agree with me that every path graph is a forest. How would we go about proving that? Well, first, we'd want to show that it's connected. So we'd want to prove that given any two vertices of a path graph, there is a path that connects them. That's fairly easy to do given the definition of a path graph. The other thing you have to prove is that it has no cycles. The way I would go about doing that is first noting, well, suppose that it does have a cycle for the sake of contradiction. Then certainly that cycle can't contain either of these end vertices, either of those leafs because they only have degree one. So there's no way they're going to be part of a cycle. In a cycle, every vertex has to have at least degree two. And if we're thinking of cycles as subgraphs, where we only have the vertices and the edges of the cycle, then every vertex has exactly degree two. So there's no way these two end vertices, if our graph has a cycle, no way those two end vertices are going to be in the cycle. So our cycle must exist somewhere in here. <clears throat> Then, assuming you've got a cycle somewhere in there, in your path graph, you'd quite quickly be able to show that that's going to force a contradiction with how the edges of a path graph are defined. So, for practice with the definition of trees, connected graph with no cycles, I'd recommend, you know, try proving some graphs are trees, try proving some graphs aren't trees. And then what I think might be the most, the, the easiest equivalent definition to prove is prove that this definition of tree is equivalent to the definition saying that a graph is a tree if and only if every pair of vertices in the graph is connected by exactly one unique path. Give that a go. Let me know how it goes down in the comments. I'll probably talk a little bit about it in the description. So, and like I said, we'll, we'll prove it in a full dedicated lesson later. Let me know if you'd like to see that sooner rather than later, and I'll bump it up my lesson queue, and we'll get to it soon. So I hope this video helped you understand what trees are in graph theory. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you next time.
And thank you very much for watching. I already said that. Subscribe. That's the last part. Subscribe for the swankiest math lessons on the internet. And a big thanks to Valo, who, upon my request, kindly gave me permission to use his music in my math lessons. Link to his music in the description.